Welcome to another Drug Chug episode, and today we'll be talking about fish oil and how it works, plus some pharmacology, so let's get right into it. Here's a quick breakdown of this video. So first we'll talk about what do fish oils actually do, the mechanism of action or how it works. We'll talk about common fish oil products you might see over the counter and behind the counter. Then we'll talk about the common side effects and then a quick summary. And as always, we'll have a short quiz at the end to see what we retained. So what do fish oils actually do? So let's figure this out. So if we have a fish over here, we basically extract these fatty acids from it into this concentrated pill form known as fish oils. Now these fish oils are also known as omega-3 fatty acids. So those words are interchangeable. Fish oil, omega-3, same thing. Now the reason why they call it omega-3 is if we look at the fatty acid chain over here, we could count from the end to the double bond and we'll see that we'll have one, two, three carbons until we hit the double bond. And this repeats throughout the entire chain. That's why they call it omega-3. Now we're going to talk about three of these omega fatty acids. First we have ALA, then we have DHA and EPA. From our fish oils, we have DHA and EPA. And these fatty acids are omega-3 fatty acids. And these are the ones that we extract from fish. And ALA is another fatty acid that comes from vegetables and nuts. So this would be a choice for our vegetarian patient population. So now going back to fish oils, which is the main focus here, we have DHA and EPA. Now these two fatty acids are the ones that we extract from fish. And what we see is these fish oils help with your hair, your skin, nails, and most importantly, it helps with your heart. Specifically, it helps patients that have something called hypertriglyceridemia, which just means they have way too much triglycerides in their blood. So if we look at our lipid panel here, we see that our triglycerides, we want the levels to be below 150 milligrams per deciliter. So if a patient like this one here has a triglyceride level of 300, then we could give them fish oils to help reduce their triglyceride levels. Now we know that fish oils are good for your hair, skin, and nails, but they're primarily used to lower your triglyceride level. To understand how fish oils work in our body, first we need to understand how triglycerides are made. So here we have some free fatty acids, and these free fatty acids make their way to our liver. So I'm just going to zoom in right here, and in our liver we have an enzyme. And what this enzyme does is it puts each of these free fatty acids together and it binds them so that we have a triglyceride. So how do fish oils reduce this process? Well, we don't know. It's actually still under research and the direct mechanism is still unknown. But it's thought that when we have DHA or EPA in our system, it actually comes into the enzyme and it blocks the active site. So when we block the active site on the enzyme, it stops free fatty acids from being put together, which stop the formation of triglycerides, which lower our triglyceride level. And there are actually more theories on how fish oils actually work. But for now, we're just going to stick to this one because this is the most straightforward. And I'm actually going to paste the other theories in the description below so that you have that information. So let's talk about some of the common fish oil products we might see in our pharmacy or hospital. So by far, the most common would be the over-the-counter fish oils that you might find at any pharmacy. And these are going to be varying from concentration and size and dosage. So it's a good idea to go over the packaging to tell our patients on how to accurately take it. So for the dosing, you're going to want to target one gram a day if they are trying to prevent a secondary cardiovascular event. So if they've had a stroke or a heart attack in the past, we want them to have at least one gram daily. Now for targeting their triglyceride level, we're going to want anywhere from three to five grams daily but the target is generally four grams a day. 
So if they're targeting triglycerides, it's four grams a day. Now, some major issues we see with the over-the-counter fish oil is that it's not regulated by the FDA, meaning the concentrations can vastly range anywhere from 13% all the way to 63%. So every capsule they take might not be the exact dose they need. And this is one of the issues that we have with over-the-counter medications. Now, there are prescription fish oils that a patient can take, and there are two. The first one's going to be Lovaza, and the way this is dosed, it's 4 grams every day, or they could split it as 2 grams twice a day. Now, some facts about Lovaza, each capsule's 1 gram, so they would need to take a minimum of 4 capsules a day. And the concentration, because it's prescription, it's regulated by the FDA, meaning every single capsule is going to have 47% EPA and 38% DHA. So this way we could make sure that the patient takes the right dose every single time. Now the next prescription fish oil is Vesepa. And here we're going to see a very similar dosing because it has four half gram capsules twice a day with food, which comes out to a target of four grams a day. Or they could take two one gram capsules twice a day with food, which also comes out to that target of four grams daily. Now, Vesepa isn't the traditional EPA or DHA. It's actually a derivative of that fatty acid, and it's called ethyl, and it does the same thing. But the biggest thing about Vesepa is you have to take it with food. The reason for that is, is it causes a lot of side effects, which we'll get into. So what are the side effects from taking fish oils? Well, the first one and the most notable is going to be fishy burps. And typically we'll see patients complaining about this because every time they burp, they'll have that fishy smell. And one way we could actually counteract this is by freezing the capsules or putting them in the refrigerator. The next side effect is a little bit more serious. And these fish oils, even though they could lower triglycerides, it's been shown that they may increase your LDL or your bad cholesterol. So if a patient is going to take fish oil, it's actually a good idea to have a lipid panel check to see if they have normal or even low LDL levels because of the slight increase. We may also see an increase in bleed risk when taking fish oils. So we want to avoid drugs that also increase this risk. So drugs such as warfarin, NSAIDs, aspirin. So that way we reduce the chance of having too thin of blood and too much bleeding. And the last common side effect we may see is GI upset. And this is just purely the fact that you're taking pure fatty oils. And one good thing would be to take it with food. Remember, Vesepa requires it. So it's a good idea to let the patient know about this so that they could plan accordingly. So a quick summary of everything we learned. We know fish oils come from fish. We extract the oil from them directly, and we get DHA and EPA. And these are our omega-3 fatty acids. We know that fish oil is good for our hair, skin, nails, and primarily our heart. And the reason for that is because it lowers the triglyceride levels. Also, we know we have over-the-counter fish oils, and the target dose for all fish oils are 4 grams daily. And the problem with the over-the-counter is there's no FDA regulations because the concentration can vary capsule to capsule. And then we talked about two prescription fish oils. We had Lovaza and Vesepa, and we said Vesepa you have to take with food. And some of the common side effects was fishy burp, and we want to freeze the capsules to reduce that fishy burp. So there you guys go. You made it to the end. So as promised, let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. Question one, fish oils may reduce which of the following? Question two, fish oils may increase which of the following? Three, what is the target daily dose for fish oils in reducing triglycerides? Four, fish oils may cause which of the following side effects? 
All right, you guys made it to the end. If you have any questions, as always, please leave a comment down below. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button so we could reach out to other people who need this help. And we also have new merch in our store, new t-shirt designs every week, and also a Patreon to help support the page. And we'll catch you next time.